Hi everyone uh, and welcome to my channel Creative Space and today's topic is all about food and dining etiquettes and when you're welcoming somebody at your place what all should you keep in mind and who better than a personal brand coach uh, who is also an image consultant and who is at par in this industry so uh, please join me in welcoming miss leema uh, leema thank you so much for doing this for my channel and please introduce yourself thank you so much neha for giving me this opportunity to come here and speak to your followers and uh, share a little bit about uh, you know what we call as dining etiquette and which is uh, you know something very simple and needs to be understood by everyone uh, to progress in life to tell you something about myself my name is lima and uh, lima means five in the language malay and it's also the capital of a uh, country peru and therefore uh, these are things that i look forward to going to malay or going to malaysia or to peru and my organization is called dotting i and uh, this is from a phrase called you know crossing the t's and dotting the i's so that means you are trying to complete something when we cross the t or we dot the i we are completing and uh, i'm a specialist in behavioral skills body language personal branding and leadership tools and i conduct uh, group coaching as well as one on one consulting so this is a little bit about myself how nice um such unique information you have given uh, so thank you for that uh, yeah so uh, without any further ado lima can we start with the questions definitely definitely okay so my first question would be what are the top 3 to 5 mistakes or concerns or some things that people miss out okay see dining is a experience uh, which has to please all the senses right when we look at food we look at how presentable the food is right we look at the ambience that the food is presented in we look at the people around us whether they have pleasing personalities we then you know smell the food when it is brought to the table yeah we sometimes hear the crackling also of the food when you know it is a sizzler you hear the sizzle and then you are anticipating that something tasty is going to come there and then when finally it is laid down on your table and when you eat it you love the taste right you agree with me yes neha similarly the people who sit together for a meal you know they also need to please all your senses mm. so when we say dining etiquette it's like a code of conduct in in a society yeah. or in a social behavior that uh, you know we are expected to do so dining etiquette is not meant for only raja maharaja aristocracy kings and queens and for politicians or statesmen it's meant for everyone who sits with another person for a meal yes so when i'm saying all the senses we we sometimes know how to eat with a fork and spoon we know how to smile at another person but one grave mistake a lot of people don't pay attention to is these loud noises that they make when they eat yeah right they will be slurping and burping and there's a lot of impoliteness in that but people don't get that right they feel that it's okay people will tolerate all the noises but actually there are many people who uh, feel a little awkward when they hear the you know crunchiness of the food uh, coming out so loudly yes right so uh, one big mistake with which people can correct and we are never told in most households not to make noises yeah we are told to eat slowly but uh, you know we are never said we are never told that you know can you chew a little gently 
the food is not getting over so as a guest or even as a host or a hostess it's very important to pay attention to what kind of noises one is making second scenario is you know you are invited to a buffet mm. right shaadi and you are invited and you stand in line right and uh, people stand in a line and then you have taken your salads and you have taken your papad or something that came in the beginning and then you go to the mains and you are waiting in line a lot of people start eating in the line itself <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes they are talking to their friends and then they think that it's okay to eat the papad or it's okay to eat you know the salad actually good dining etiquette says that you fill your plate and then you go and sit in a table or stand wherever you are supposed to stand and uh, you know then eat right so one is before you begin the meal one is during the meal and another very important thing is uh, a lot of women when they eat and they finish the meal and nowadays you do get you know something to clean your hands you have lemon given to you you don't have to go to the wash basin that doesn't mean that you start grooming yourself on the table itself you know once you've finished your meal don't start applying your lipstick taking taking out your phone and looking at you know yourself because uh, uh, grooming has to be done in private so if you feel your lipstick has worn off you know you need to get up excuse yourself go to a washroom and you know apply your um now the second question now comes to is we will go to the uses of the cutlery so understanding of the use of cutlery especially while at the dining uh, table there are so many different types of cutleries that you get um at a proper fine dining restaurants so if you can give certain examples of few uses okay so fine dining is a different game by itself so if you have been invited as a guest to a fine dining restaurant or for a fine dining meal that means that there are going to be people who are very important in that meal right it's not a casual gathering of friends so when you go in for a fine dining meal and you're talking about the cutlery that what we need to remember basic rules some basic rules because fine dining rules can go up to yeah. you know 200 pages yeah 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 and basic rules your knives and your spoons are always placed on the right side right the spoon is placed on the right side your knife is also placed on the right side so that means you have a plate in the center which is your main plate your knife and your spoon are on the right side of the place setting so that's called a place setting in fine dining it is also possible that your name is reserved and you know put there in a in a name tag so you don't go to a dining table and switch places with a friend there is a reason why a certain order is followed in fine dining now suppose you have reached much before the host or the hostess you know uh you are supposed to wait at the reception you're not supposed to go in and just occupy any chair probably you you are not aware what is reserved for you and nor should you stand at the reception and think uh, you know anxiously why the host or the hostess is not there generally they will come on time and if you have reached much early you can't place an order just because you have reached on time so with respect to cutlery you, like i said knives and spoons go to the right and your forks will go always to the left <coughs> right so why uh, generally all dining place settings are meant for right handed people unfortunately we don't have a setting you know focused on the left handed person so even a left handed person throughout the world is taught to eat with the right hand they can do a lot of stuff with their left hand but eating is always with the right hand and especially in india we don't encourage people to eat with the left hand and throughout the world also there is a bias or you know everything is skewed towards the right handed person that is why 
so right hand generally is the hand of strength that is why we keep a knife because a knife can help you cut hmm. and the left hand is considered the hand of dexterity means flexible hand hmm. so if your hand is flexible then you can pick and choose and eat and you cut with your right hand that is why you have the knife and the spoons on the right hand and the fork on the left hand now order of you know all the cutlery is arranged in such a way that you always start from the outside you go in and you see a plate and you're very scared which cutlery to use at which course yeah so just remember the term outside in so that means if you're getting a salad right and you have another fork kept on your left you have two forks on your left that means the outermost fork is meant for your mm. salad and your outermost spoon probably is a soup spoon so remember the rule outside in so three things that you can remember is that your spoons and your knives on the right your forks on the left and then you follow the rule of outside in okay okay good to go <laughs> yeah <laughs> good uh, and now the next uh, a uh, question would be if top 3 to 5 tips uh, to keep in mind while hosting someone for lunch or dinner like example arranging the table as you said so anything that you would like to share on this so arranging the table so uh, when we invite someone it's not necessarily a fine dining yeah. meal yeah right but it is still it can be an informal or a formal meal right formal is when there is an occasion and then you have invited people of importance and informal is when there is a gathering of friends so generally what happens when we invite somebody very important we try to get the best dinner set out yes right and what's the meaning of that that everything matches everything that means your plates your quarter plates your dinner plates you know your saucers your bowls lot of things match yeah so if you are a home host you know a hostess uh, hosting something at home and there are very important people that means if there are 10 people see to it that most of them get matching plates and matching you know cutlery yes uh, with respect to you know indian dining what happens a lot of time the host serves Yes. the hostess serves if it is a you know informal gathering but if you are trying to make it a formal dinner or a formal meal see to it that you sit along with the guests that you hire someone to you know serve food for you probably someone who is qualified to do that instead of sitting because that is a very formal way of saying that okay we have a gathering which is very close to a fine dining gathering the host and the hostess both of them sit down along with the guest so keep that in mind and generally if you have a table which holds probably 10 people or four people or six people the host and the hostess sit at both the ends of the table they don't sit next to each other mm-hmm. right and generally the most important person to the host or the hostess sits on their right mm-hmm. so you keep a chair and you allow them to it so when you are uh, you know parting your you're creating a party scene or a meal scene at home there are many things that you can borrow from a fine dining you know meal or a restaurant especially with respect to lighting you can have warmer lights uh, because it will give a warmer feeling most of the time the tube lights or the white lights are used by a uh, fast food joints so that the energy is very high but when you call people home you want them to have a mellow time you want them to have good energy but you don't want them to just gobble up the food and leave yeah so you want yeah. to make it a you know slow affair hmm and so my next question now would be on the food items so uh, which food item should be consumed by hand or fork or spoon or chopsticks or you know people get confused sometimes what to use when so if you can give few tips on that yeah 
so what we serve in india typically is you know a lot of rice items mm-hmm. right and we serve a lot of items which we prefer food which is not dry the accompaniments are dry but are you know the main courses generally has something which is better mm-hmm. right like a gravy or like a soup or like dal or stuff like that is your hands get coated with yeah. food so those kind of food one should have with a fork and a spoon so you know you can use a spoon to have rice and you can have a fork or you can have something to push the rice to the spoon don't use your hands to push the rice because then again you know the hands become full of whatever food that you are eating the dry food like you know roti or breads we can break with our hands so uh, when you're breaking roti see to it that you take one piece at a time or bread also one piece at a time generally there is a plate given to you at the side of your main plate where you can keep your roti break a piece or break the bread a piece and then dip it in whatever you feel you know is uh, going along with your food so the only foods that you should touch is which will not leave its mark on your hand Mm. so roti will not you can always you know wipe it a papad will not piece of bread will not you don't have to attempt to eat a papad with a fork and knife you know or you don't have to attempt to eat even a bread with a fork and knife you can always break it into bite size pieces so your hands are also cleaner salads are generally eaten with a fork because you have leaves there and they also give you a salad knife a salad knife is not like our kitchen knife it won't be that sharp it won't ca- cause you any kind of harm but uh, you know you can still cut a lettuce leaf or you know some kind of uh, potato wedges or something and you know use your fork and eat pasta is generally eaten again with a fork what you have to do is you can take a fork twirl it you know and keep a spoon against it to twirl it and put it in your mouth and generally those are all small portions that should be eaten when you are in a social gathering you you can't eat the whole bowl you know at once in your uh, in one go yes most of the people eat mouthful and they chew you know uh, that is yeah. again very disturbing yeah. now how to the next question will be how to hold the beverage glasses or something that you can would like to share <laughs> okay now beverages okay in fine dining you can have various glasses yeah. right so you can have a champagne flute flute means it will be longer right and champagne flutes are generally longer also because champagne is a bubbly liquid and it can spill out so something long is given so that the bubbles settle when you have this sparkling wine glass yeah you know again which has a bowl which is wider yeah. or you have you know if you watch a james bond movie you know about the martinis that james bond has yes. that's a cocktail glass so you have old fashion glasses which are short round right so many many glasses which can be held in different ways so you you have a uh, if you are offering something to uh, you know amp up the style of your fine dining or of your party you can always have a water goblet it's much like a wine goblet but a little more you know longer and generally water uh, doesn't uh, you know change its temperature very fast mm. because you know it it will maintain if you're giving it in room temperature it will still be mm. what happens with wine is generally it is you know preserved or kept in 19 degrees but when you bring it out it becomes warmer right and warm wine doesn't taste as good as the wine that is chilled for you so to avoid the wine growing warmer you are supposed to hold the stem of the glass yes. not the rim of the glass the stem of the glass and the moment you hold the stem of the glass it makes you look elegant and you're also helping the wine retain its cool factor you know so that yeah. it, it tastes much better now if it's a beer mug that you're getting of course you can hold the handle yeah okay. so uh, 
one thing is a lot of times you know when people are offered some wine and you want to say no to it don't turn your glass upside down saying no 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 i don't want it just hold your hand above the wine glass and signal that you don't want any wine okay uh, i would also like to ask on teas and coffees sometimes uh, you know you want to have coffee or tea after the meal people do have that sometimes people yeah. just keep the tags uh, the tea bags uh, inside yeah. uh, you know they leave it there or while having coffee which hand to use if you can just shed some light on teas and coffees yeah so tea and coffee generally when it is served with you know a sachet don't leave the sachet hanging in your tea cup right so what you do is you will have a stirrer spoon right so use the stirrer spoon to just roll your you know sachet don't press it because we are so used to extracting everything out of the tea bag that you know what you get there that is enough and then you leave it at the side of the you know saucer that that you have and then leave the saucer on the table when you lift you don't have to lift it with the saucer mm-hmm. unless there is no table you know then what you can do is keep the saucer on your lap and then have your tea don't walk around with the saucer in your hand you need to keep it somewhere just hold the you know tea cup mm-hmm. with respect to coffee also after you stir generally in, in fine dining there is something called a slop bowl that means whatever is left you can leave it in that bowl your stirring you know equipment or you know your uh, sachet you can leave it in the slop bowl it is like a waste bowl that is kept there so find out if there is a slop bowl leave everything there then you have some just your tea and coffee uh, mug or cup and the saucer that you can use okay okay i think one more question i would like to uh, ask uh, about the napkins you said for the fine dining so now uh, somebody who is hosting a dinner at home or during buffet we have paper napkins or tissue papers that you place on the dining area i mean uh, in a napkin holder or when people are in a buffet system they give napkins under the uh, plate so how yeah. are people uh, supposed to use those so understand when someone is inviting us you know in for a meal or even in a buffet area there are tables that are very cleanly kept right so if you follow even normal hygiene rules after you use a tissue you don't display it to another eater so if you follow that because we are talking about a good code of conduct so that people feel comfortable so uh, why is etiquette put in place so that people have good relationship with each other now after a meal if people feel uncomfortable sitting in the same space as you because you have made the area you know very very uh, unhygienic or unsocial no one would want to sit in that same space given a choice mm-hmm. so if you are using a napkin generally now you know you can use a napkin even to wipe your plate if you feel that you need to wipe your plate you know before you even put food in it and you can keep it under your plate hold it under your plate and carry it with you mm-hmm. so that you know you need to wipe your hand you can but if this is a business meal see to it that you don't use your right hand to eat anything because you may have to shake somebody's hand right if it's a business meal if your right hand is full of food stains and someone very important comes up so neha who's your uh, you know uh, idol in terms of a celebrity ritesh deshmukh <laughs> ritesh deshmukh so you are called to a party mm. okay ritesh deshmukh walks in mm. and the host introduces you to ritesh deshmukh and uh, you have already eaten the butter paneer you know and the roti what what happens to you that you can't you know uh, greet ritesh deshmukh yeah, it's embarrassing it's embarrassing and miss the opportunity it's embarrassing and it's a lost opportunity yeah. right so therefore that is why it is important that 
even in a buffet even in places where you can manage to get a fork and spoon please use that to have your food so that this hand is free to greet people right or or in a cocktail kind of situation mocktail kind of situation hold your drink in your left hand so that you can you know shake hands with ritesh deshmukh with your right hand yeah so always make use of this so keep your napkin handy and also nowadays they do display a extra set of you know paper napkins so that you can pick a pick a couple of them so that you know you can wipe your hand if need be of small food items yeah. not the heavy ones you may not be able to do it unless you use water yeah. keep use that to wipe your hand don't throw the paper napkins all over the table like some decoration keep it you know underneath your table and as far as possible go and dispose it off where the dry waste is you know so that you are still leaving the place clean yeah. okay thank you so much um and now my last question i think we have covered a lot my so my last question would be apart from this that i must have missed something and you would like to address the viewers yeah so you know a uh, very common thing that we get uh, you know neha in any restaurant whether it's fine dining and sometimes in homes also okay one of the common things that we get is a napkin you know uh, and uh, people ha- you know wipe their entire face with the napkin sometimes if it is you know very warm and they're perspiring or you know don't use a napkin the way it is supposed to be used right so how do you use a napkin given to you remember that you know you the napkin is meant to dab the corner of your mouth in case there is something at the corner of your mouth right just the corner of your mouth the moment you get the napkin sometimes it's like a swan and all it is made and kept there for you you know it looks very pretty sometimes it is kept on the left side of your plate you pick it up if you are in a host hostess kind of situation you can only open the napkin if your host or hostess has opened it generally the hostess you don't open it before they open it right so you wait for them to open it if you are in a equal kind of situation you can open your napkin place it on your lap right don't place it on your collar like a bib right and uh, don't use it and tie it round your neck there are there is only one situation where you can tie a napkin round your neck is when you are eating crab they give it to you because it is a very messy food mm-hmm. so you have a hammer you have lot of stuff to eat crab but otherwise you you will not get anything messy so keep your napkin on your lap see to it that when you want to take it just fold a little bit use these two fingers can you see these two fingers mm-hmm. so the index finger and the middle finger and dab so it should not be it should it should not be like a drama you know sometimes people <laughs> turn like this so don't do that fine dining or etiquette is not like some aapko drama nahi karna you have to do it very naturally yeah. so if you see someone doing it don't take that kind of pose that is yeah. not required don't be over exquisite about it <laughs> don't do that also but don't scrub your face also with an napkin right you want to leave the napkin looking uh, clean but with you know it will be washed but it should not be that you know the person who is washing is wondering who who actually used the napkin so don't do that and once you have finished using it place it loosely next to your plate okay uh, you can loosely fold it you don't have to make the swan that you got you know <laughs> or the flower that you got nor do you have to bundle it like you know don't leave it wadded up like thrown to one place don't do that don't use it to blow your nose in corona and you know during this pandemic to cough into it don't do that carry your own stuff to you know cough into it and suppose you want to leave the table and there's something urgent that has come up in fine dining you need to keep your phones on silent not answer calls where you're telling people ha mai khana kha raha hu mai khana kha raha hu you know that means that person is not important who knows that you are actually sitting somewhere very important 
right so unless somebody very important calls you never pick your call so uh, if you are going to leave the table please say excuse me place your napkin on your chair not on the table because when you place it on the table the wait staff feels you are finished if you want to go in the middle of a meal to the washroom just say excuse me in the same way leave it on the chair don't tell people i'm going to the washroom don't tell them what you are planning to do mm. right so those are no nos for any kind of uh, fine dining scenario and then you come back and then you use your napkin right so they know that you're still coming back so this is very important that people know where what to do with a napkin because it is one of the most common implements given to people mm. don't talk with food in your mouth chew your food let it go you know to a certain place wait until you've swallowed the food in your mouth yeah. before you talk because you can spit it on someone else you know so that's going to defeat the purpose of calling it fine dining so something that is very important take a little bit chew it then talk and you don't have to talk so much that you don't give anyone a chance to talk a lot of people you know everyone to to talk yeah want to ask me anything else i'm open to that yeah uh, you know i think uh, i have asked the most common questions that i could find around and you have answered it so wonderfully so many takeaways and it's just the basic i mean i know uh, you are at a very high level and you have a lot of study and expertise into this topic so to all my viewers this vlog is just to create an awareness if you people have any more questions or you have come across anything that you would like to ask please leave in the comment section below there is a lot to learn she is also a coach a personal coach a group coach as she mentioned earlier you can directly uh, approach her or through me and um, definitely i'll leave the details um, in the description below please share this to as many people as possible and subscribe and thank you leema so much thank you thank you neha it was a pleasure speaking to you and informing your viewers uh, what to do when they are called in as a guest definitely all this will help them become more popular i guess yes yes definitely definitely you set a standard when you follow these things you definitely set a standard you stand out in your group so yeah it's very important and lot to learn also for others why not yes. yeah so thank you and i, I would be uh, sketching lima as a thank you gesture from my end uh, so thank lima and do uh, share with everybody possible thank you thank you thank you so much neha yes. have a great uh, week ahead and a weekend ahead thank you wish you the same thank you yeah